Hello and welcome to another episode of the Movies Be Like Podcast. I'm Ryan. I'm Miranda. And today we're going to be discussing Toy Story, Story movies. movies. Very good. <laughs> yes, all four of them. The quadrilogy. Yes, from 1995 all the way to 2019. Mm-hmm. 24 years of Toy Story. And they're making more, apparently. Well, well they're making more spin-offs and They're making like a Buzz Lightyear sequel or something? Yeah, with Chris Evans. Oof. <laughs> As Buzz and not Woody Allen. Don't know how that's gonna be. Well, I guess with we'll Tim see. Allen, not Woody Allen. Not with Tim Allen. With Chris Evans. Chris Evans, Captain America. God, okay. The Winter Soldier. <laughs> well, so today we're gonna be discussing all four movies. We have a lot of fun facts lined up to talk about. Mm-hmm. And we also both grew up watching these movies. Mm-hmm. Well, I grew up watching the second one a lot. And. You definitely watched more movies as a kid in general than I did. Yeah, um, but. But I did watch them. Yes. And Toy Story 3 didn't even come out until we were like almost 12 years old. Mm-hmm. So that was. I remember seeing that one in theaters. In the... It's heartbreaking. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone is crying. Everyone is mm-hmm. crying. Mm-hmm. At multiple parts of the film. Well, anyway, we'll we'll get to that. Um, so, but before we get started, Ryan, how are you doing today? Doing great. I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing fine. I woke up, you know, washed my face, did my <laughs> daily th- thing. I ate breakfast. I don't know. Wow. It's not that interesting. <laughs> I prepared for the podcast. Typical morning. You know, yep. Tried a new flavor of my yogurt. What flavor? It's like Boston cream pie. Is it good? Pretty good. That's nice. How about you, Miranda? What did you do this morning? I didn't do anything. I mean, I, I watched a movie. You watched a movie? Over- <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. I woke up at 7. <laughs> I woke up at 7 a.m. And I uh, did some stuff for... Uh, the dance company I'm in, I uploaded a bunch of files, <laughs> and mm-hmm. while those were uploading, I watched a movie. That's crazy. Yeah. It was not a good movie. Mm. I don't know why I watched Enlighten it. Enlighten me on the movie. I don't want to talk about it. It's really bad. Well. It's Cameron Diaz. Okay. And Christina Applegate. <laughs> you know the movie. I do. If you know those two actors. <laughs> Wait, I don't know the movie. <laughs> Well, it's not good. But if you, you know, you, you'll you know what I'm talking about if you've seen it before or heard of it. Sure. Um, anyway, let's get right into it, okay? So, Toy Story. Let's uh, share our ranking of the four films. Um, so, for me, the second one has always been my personal favorite because I feel like that's where it all comes <clears throat> together. Um, there's, I mean, the second one is when Jesse comes in. And yeah. Woody fi- finds out his origin story and mm-hmm. things like that. And Buzz is finally not, you know, all he's not all cocky and <laughs> yeah. He's just a normal he's just a normal guy now. Yeah, and I, they have the funny bloopers at the end. Yeah, and I think it's the best overall. <laughs> it is. It is because it hits everything that you want from yeah. a Toy Story film. Yeah. And so the second, my second favorite one is the first one, and... Same here. Yeah. So So two to one for me. Two, one, and then I feel like after we watching three and four, they're kind of the same for me, because I, there are certain things I don't like about the third one, and there are certain things I don't like about the fourth one, but they kind of cancel each other out. I don't know. Like, in the third one, I really like how, um... All of the characters are in it. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? In the fourth one, you don't see Jesse, like, at all. And yeah. Buzz is weirdly, like... Stupid. Stupid in it. And... Like, he's, a, like he's like, a comic relief, and he's not... He wasn't like he wasn't that before. the good old Buzz that we all know and love. He was kind of, like, dumb. And I was... That was, that confused <laughs> me. But, um... But in the third one, what I don't like is the villain. What's his name? Lotso Bear? Lotso. I don't like him. I yeah, mean, I know you're not evil. supposed to like him because he's evil, but I just don't like him as a villain. Like, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I don't... I don't know. Um, it's... The best part of the third one is definitely the ending. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
And the, that made me cry. Yeah. <laughs> and the fourth one, I understand it's supposed to be about both Bo and Woody, like their journey. Yeah. So I understand why not all the other characters are like a priority, but like, but, but it, that's it, the a, last one. It's the last one. You know? And it, they didn't get as much of screen yeah. time. Yeah. We can, Especially we can, Jesse. We can tell our opinions about yes. it when we get to her. Sorry. Yeah. So your ranking is the same? Yeah, pretty much. It's like one, two, no, two, one. And then four, three? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard. That's kind of how I feel, too. I feel like the fourth one is just slightly better than the third one. Um, But I don't know. The ending of the third one is just... Just because we're ranking them doesn't mean that... I know. They're all really good, okay? That doesn't mean one sucks, then (laughs) the other ones don't. Yeah. But... Um, Okay. So, the first Toy Story. First Toy Story. But this came out in... 1995, November. Um, It was Pixar's first full-length feature film, which was very groundbreaking at the time, because before that they had only really done, like, advertisements, and who knew they were capable of making such an amazing story about toys, you know? It's really funny. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Mm-hmm. so good. Uh, I remember as a kid, Sid's toys always scared me a lot, and I didn't fully understand that at the end they were all teaming up together to scare Sid. I thought that they were just scary the whole time. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense. I I get that, because I had the same feeling when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I was creeped out. With the baby on the... Yeah. On the... On the... (laughs) On the little spider baby. Yeah, that... that, And then the hooker. That... The, no, the baby has yeah. been ingrained in my mind. Yes. You just activated a memory that I've had yes. locked away. And the hooker, the legs yeah. with the hook. Pretty funny. That's a pretty funny adult joke you, d- you got there, Pixar. By the way, spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who hasn't seen Toy Who Story? Who hasn't seen all four okay. of them? Everyone's seen it. Um, all right. So Toy Story also took, it took four years to make, and Disney wanted them to make a fairy tale. But they were like, nah, you already did that like 800 times. We're going to do something new. (laughs) So they decided to take a risk and make a story about toys, which is pretty cool. I'm glad they did that. You know? And they they made so many original characters that we have known and loved for over 20 years. And um, the original story was going to use Tinny, which is from uh, Pixar's like award-winning short tin toy. I don't really like that short. It kind of creeps me out just because of the baby in it. Tinny's the drummer boy, right? I think so. It's like a, it's called Tin Toy, and it's like a little drummer toy, and the baby keeps running. I don't really remember it the very well. The baby is really bad. But the baby's modeled. really creepy, but like that's not their fault because yeah. it's, re- it's te- really old. <laughs> the technology wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but originally it was going to be Tinny. Tinny was going to be Buzz. He was going to play alongside Woody, and Woody was going to be a ventriloquist puppet. Which is why, in the early art that we saw, like, if you go on Disney Plus and you see, like, the um, deleted scenes and they're just kind of, like, mapped out pictures with, like, some dialogue over them. In a lot of them, Woody is, like, way bigger than Buzz. Remember we were watching it we're like, why is he so huge? Mm-hmm. It's because he was originally going to be a ven- ventriloquist puppet. I'm glad they didn't do Yeah, that. and they I... decided not to because um, they realized that ventriloquist dolls are very creepy and How did they they're know? associated with horror movies. How did they not realize that to begin with? I mean... <laughs> ventriloquist dummies are I don't know. very just... Hmm. But anyway, they decided not to use Tinny as the, as the other main character because... Um, they, I think they just realized, like, we've been there, done that, and we should do a toy that kids actually would be really excited about. So they went with a space ranger instead, which makes a lot more sense. <laughs> um, the movie was tentatively named You Are a Toy. <laughs> you but Are then a Toy. The, because remember Woody goes, You Are a Toy, a bunch in the first movie. Yeah. Yeah, so it was... It, there was an idea to name it that, but they decided not to go with it. But I think Toy Story was, like, the first name that they came up with for it. And they that was just, like, the, like, what's it called? Temporary name The placeholder? Yeah. And then they were like, should we change it? And then they came up with that idea. And then they were like, no, I think Toy Story makes enough sense. And it's a good name, you know? Um, 
Also, um, a lot of people wonder why Andy doesn't have a dad. <laughs> I mean, I wondered that too, but I, I don't know. Yeah. You can just... Well... You don't need one. <laughs> I know. Well, that's what they said. They said, like, he was never necessary to the story. But the reason why he doesn't have a dad is There's because... There's a reason? Yes, is because they couldn't afford it. <laughs> Back in 1995, it was really expensive and just, like, difficult to make um, human characters mm -hmm. in animation. So they were like, let's just not give him a dad. Like, they just never, they just never They're animated just like, one. Let's just cut our losses there. And <laughs> yeah, and so they saved a lot of money doing that. And also, he his character just wasn't necessary yeah. in the story. Um, that's what they say. So, that's why Andy doesn't have a dad. In the movies. <laughs> um, I have a fun fact about characters for Toy Story 1. If you don't touch on it, I'll tell you. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, the movie also saved Etch-A-Sketch, like the company. <laughs> they saved them. They were about to go bankrupt. And because they used them in Toy Story, um, it w uh, when it was released, uh, they had a 20% increase in sales after the movie came out. Oh, that's out. fantastic. Yeah, so they saved... The company, at your sketch I don't know if they're still in business, but... They probably are. I mean, I remember having one as a kid, <clears throat> and I could never draw as well as they do in the movie. I remember being so angry. How about as good as Buddy from Elf? Does he do that in Elf? Doesn't he? He has an etch sketch and he, like, draws perfectly. I believe you. Mm -hmm. It's just not coming to mind there, right now. There's also this other restaurant that I used to go to when I was younger that, you know... The restaurants would give stuff to kids, like toy menus and stuff. Yeah. Oh, they gave us Etch-A-Sketches to play. Aww. Which is really, really neat. <laughs> really neat. Really fun. Mom, remember? Yes. Okay. Um, also, Toy Story. It was the highest grossing film of 1995, um, which is kind of shocking. I mean, also not really, because it was, like, Pixar's first animated film. So mm. I guess it's not that surprising, but... I mean, that just goes to show how much the movie's made for literally everyone, you know? Is it the first 3D modeled film ever? I'm not sure. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, but they made $191 million at the box office. $191 million. Whoa. Yes. So. That's nothing compared to the next ones. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's really big in 1995. Yeah. Um. Also, I have some really cool stuff to say about Woody and Buzz. I want to know. Okay. So, Woody was originally supposed to be an asshole. He was supposed <laughs> to be, like, such a jerk. He was supposed to be verbally abusing everyone and throwing Buzz out the window. And the ending of Toy Story was going to be Woody becoming a good person. That was the original idea. I don't like that. I know. Why well, would... they realize that, too. And so, the end of the ending of the film would, would be him becoming selfless and kind-hearted after learning to accept Buzz. But that... they decided that no one wants to see a kid's movie where the protagonist is, like, shitty. <laughs> I'm thinking Bruce Almighty, where he's just shitty the whole time. Yeah. He has God, one Bruce dude. Almighty sucks. He has one... He's well, the dude, worst protagonist. Change. He's so mean and awful. Well, anyway, well, yes. So Woody, <laughs> they figured that no one wanted to see a kids movie with a tyrannical leader and just a cruel person. So they changed him to being kind-hearted, but also having flaws. Because you know, when Buzz shows up, he is like taken back, and he and he's jealous of him. Mm -hmm. So it's like they made him more human. So he's still kind-hearted, and he still runs the room with love. But Buzz comes in and he feels threatened by him. So mm -hmm. they wanted him to just be flawed, but also a really good guy. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So... Yes. <laughs> um, Woody's movements are also <clears throat> very inspired by Tom Hanks. Really? Is that how he walks? No. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, John Lasseter said that... Um, he's the director of Toy Story 1 and 2. Um, <laughs> he said that they always record the lines first because they want to pull inspiration from how the characters move while saying their lines when they animate. So, which makes a lot of sense because when I watch Woody, I feel like I'm watching Tom Hanks. <laughs> yeah. Except for when he's running and his, and his legs and arms are <laughs> flailing around all crazy. And Lee Uncrick, 
I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right. Oh, I have. He's Uncrick. Uncrick. He's the director of the third Toy Story movie, but he was also the editor for the first and second one, I think. And he said that in um, they had a lot of you know improv like noises and lines from all the characters. So Tom Hanks, there are some lines in like the second and third and fourth one that weren't used in the first one. So they. It was recorded for the first one, but they ended up not using them. So there are, like, lines in the 2019 movie that were recorded all the way back in, like, 1993. Hey. Yeah. Was that one of your fun mm. facts? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. What the heck? No, um, okay. But isn't that cool? Yeah, it's really cool. So, like, I don't know what lines in specific they, they, are. Have, they have. I don't even know if there are lines or if it's just, like, sounds. Well, I can I like can the, tell the, you like about grunts. it. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, last thing I have on Toy Story, first Toy Story. Okay, is Buzz Lightyear. So Buzz Lightyear, he had a lot of potential names such as Lunar Larry. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tempest, which was a, the a name of an Atari video game that John Lasseter and everyone working on the film really liked growing up. And then Morph and Star Command. Those were the... Oh, I'm glad they kept Star Command. Yes. They decided to go with Buzz Lightyear, which is kind of a tribute to Buzz Aldrin, the astronaut. That's perfect. Yes. <laughs> That's the perfect name. And his suit was originally going to be red, but I'm, I'm not sure why they decided not to go with that. Maybe it just didn't look well, like next to Woody or something. It didn't mm. look good. Um... So they went with purple and green because green, I think, is John Laster's favorite color and then purple is his wife Nancy's favorite color. So they went with those two colors. And apparently they're still together, so. It's pretty cute. I guess. I mean, John Laster, he kind of, <laughs> he's not that great anymore, you know? Wait, what? You don't, you don't know? No. He got accused of sexual assault. He, then he left Pixar. Oh. Which means that he did it. <laughs> yeah. So. Cow oh boy. Well, let's not talk about that on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, last thing I have on Buzz. Billy Crystal was their first choice for Buzz's voice. Billy Crystal? Yeah. The voice of Mike Wazowski. He was the first choice. Yeah. Um, but he said no. So. I'm glad. Well, and then after the movie came out, he was like, damn it. Because it made so much money. Well, then he, he then but he then came back. but then he got offered Mike Wazowski and he took it. The so. perfect role for him. Yeah, God, <clears> I cannot <throat> imagine Buzz being voiced by Billy Crystal. Imagine a Mike Wazowski voiced by Tim Allen. <laughs> and then they asked Tim Allen to be <laughs> yeah. that God. That would not work. Two deep voice uh, main characters. No, him and Sully. <laughs> I don't like it. All right. Well, that's all I have for the first Toy Story. But I also have all the fun facts on Toy Story 2. So let's move mm -hmm. on to Toy Story 2. Do mm -hmm. you have anything else to say about the first Toy Story? Oh, um, you talked about character models and budget. Yeah. So um, they had the character model for Andy. Yeah. And when he had all of his friends over, it's yeah. the same character model. They just copied and pasted it, but put different clothes on them. Really? Yeah. <laughs> to Do save... you ever see their faces, or is it just from behind them? I can't remember. You only... I mean, no, yeah, you see them... In, like, one shot when they all enter the house. Because mm -hmm. there's a camera angle from upstairs looking yeah. down. But that's, like, it, I think. Well, also in the first one, they don't really show the mom's face. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered if that was because it was just too hard to animate it. Or because that was, like, a thing back in the day. And, like, kids stuff. To Tom just not show, not show the parents. Mm -hmm. Like, faces. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Tom and Jerry. Or, like, two yeah. of the ones that I can think of right now. Charlie Brown. Charlie, yeah. Wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. So, that's what I was thinking. That makes sense. Um, but it's it probably had to do with the fact that it was just too expensive to animate a grown mm. woman's face. Yeah, especially back then, when it takes, like, forever yeah. to render. In 1995. <clears throat> yeah. Also, Sid is awful. Sid is a terrible... <laughs> Terrible kid, and I'm glad the toys broke their main rule. He to doesn't just know that he's terrible, him. though. He doesn't actually know that he's putting no. his toys in physical pain. He just likes to rearrange parts on toys. He's an engineer. 
He's, yes. <laughs> the big one. And then he pulls out the rocket that says the big one on yeah. it. Um, yeah. Also, the ending of Toy Story is just so creepy. How Woody, like, turns around his head. Oh, yeah. And scares him. I remember that part of it, like, that, that was so weird. It feels like a horror movie for, like, I mean, that's the whole point. <laughs> I mean, I know. Um, that's crazy. Really that's the only it. time that they've been seen moving in front of a human. Mm-hmm. And Sid just didn't do anything about it. He thought he was making it up. He thought it was in his imagination. Head. Yeah. One last thing. I really like the, um, Miss Nesbitt part. Which part? Miss Nesbitt. Which one's Nis- Miss Nesbitt? It's Buzz. <laughs> no, you forgot. Remember when Buzz is really emotional and that Randy Newman songs, it's all like, I could fly if I wanted to. And then he jumps off the staircase and then because he, he's aiming for the window and then he falls and his arm breaks off and then Sid's little sister finds him and picks him up and he's like, hmm. So then he, she puts a little apron and a little hat right. on him. And she makes him have a tea party. And then Woody goes in to save him, and he's all like, You see the hat? I'm Mrs. Nesbitt. That part. Yeah, I remember. That part's really good. It is great. And he's all like, Do you like the hat? The apron's a bit much, but <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah, all right. Just wanted to talk about that part. I wish... That's a really good part. I wish Buzz was that funny in Toy Story 4. Toy Story 4, he's just like, My inner voice... And then he clicks his button, and it tells him what to do. Like he's never had an inner voice before. I'm like, y'all really didn't know what to do with Buzz, did you? (laughs) (laughs) It made me so sad. I know, he was so stupid. Why was he so dominant? It's like he reverted back to his Star Command days. I know. Okay. Okay, Toy Story 2. Toy Story 2. When did that come out? 1999. November. I knew that, I was just asking. Oh, haha. It's also Uh directed by John Lasseter. Um... Toy Story 2 is our personal favorite, as we've already said, and it's because everything, as my dad said, everything comes together in this film, you know? We, you know, everyone in Andy's room is all friends now, Mm -hmm. and Buzz is finally at his best point, and, and, I mean, there's a lot of frustrating things that happen in this movie, as in every single Toy Story movie, where one of them gets taken away, and then all of them have to go yeah, and find the other one. they all have to go save him. Yeah. But in this one, Woody gets taken away to his friends. Like, he gets yeah. to see all he the people. He gets to see who he was a part of as yes, a set. Yes, yes. his TV show. He had no idea of his background. His little TV show, which, like, to promote cereal. <laughs> which, like, makes me question that, you know, Buzz is... Uh, created and he has the entire memory of being a Star Command, right? But but uh, Woody has no memory of his past. Yeah. And I want to know why. <laughs> I know that we're never going to get. You just have to more. ignore that. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I just love this film because it introduces Jessie, and I love Jessie so much. The way she's introduced when she's upside down. I love the way she says "yeehaw." I love watching Joan Cusack voice the "yeehaw." The like the back, the back, the, the what's that? The, 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 the behind the scenes of Joan Cusack voicing Jessie, oh. and she and she does like really big arms whenever she says "yeehaw," and it's so funny, and it, it gets you so happy. And you can tell that they mo- that they modeled Jesse's movements after Joan Cusack, you know. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love I love Jesse, and I love Bullseye, because Bullseye just loves Woody. He's a real do- he's like a real dog. <laughs> yeah, and this is the movie where uh, Woody walks out of the box and does the little pose, and then he walks over. And it is the best scene. Jesse, <laughs> the funniest scene of the film. Um, well, let's also talk about uh, Bullseye's uh, maximum s- land speed because he's running as fast as an airplane. Yeah, what? <laughs> Before it's gonna take off. That's always been a question. He's to me. Running, like how how do these how do these toys keep up with moving vehicles? Like we can't even do that as humans. Usain Bolt ran twenty seven, I think, miles an hour, but no one no one else can do that. Not even a... Well, how does a plush horse keep um, up with a moving plane? You know? It's a horse. 
I guess. Maybe they, they the toy the toy horses move as fast as a human can. Mm-hmm. That's it. Well, no, twice as fast. Twice, okay. Yeah. No, as fast as a moving airplane. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Now we know. Now we know. Mm-hmm. That's a fun fact. You guys should tell everyone. Mm-hmm. I love, I love Toy Story too. When they all, uh, when the when the plane f- lands over them, and they're all like, "Let's go home." Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, Buzz, his his wings go up when he see when he sees Jesse. Because he really likes. Because he really likes Jesse. That's an adult joke right there. Um, oh, I really I like that he yeah. Buzz would go down this uh, race car track and do a loop de loop and jump. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what Jesse did. Mm-hmm. They're made for each other. Yeah. Also, the prospector. There's a blooper of the prospector where he farts. He's like, shouldn't have had that bean burrito. Does he say that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. Or maybe, or maybe Buzz said that when he burped. Oh, there's a lot of gas in the in the bloopers. Yeah. Which is very like aimed towards little kids, you know. But because there there isn't like a single fart or burp joke. My favorite in... blooper was always when Woody si- sits in the middle of the tape. That's and gets the best stuck. part. Because when I when we watch <laughs> when I watch the movie for the first time, well, marry me not for the first time since I was like one. But <laughs> um, when I watched the movie for the first time that I remember, when he sits down on the tape. I always thought to myself, man, it would be funny if he just sat in the middle of that tape. And then they have a blooper where that happens. It's so funny. You you thought that that should have happened? Yeah. I was like, I... oh, oh, he's going to sit in the middle of the tape. And then he doesn't. And I was like, oh, that would have been funny if he accidentally sat in the middle of the tape. And then you were so happy that that actually was a thing. The they, bloopers. They made <laughs> he actually did it. Holy shit. Yeah. Well. You had a creative mind. Yeah. Still do. I love it. This is also just my favorite Pixar movie <clears throat> altogether. Of all 23 Pixar films, this is my favorite. Anyway, Toy Story 2. It was originally supposed to be a direct-to-video sequel. It was not even going to have a theatrical release because they were modeling after what the uh, Disney studios were doing with all their sequels. With like, like Brother Bear or... Like Aladdin and Cinderella oh, yeah. and Little Mermaid. How there's like three of those and they're all really bad. Um, they were going to just model after that and it was going to be really cheap to make to maximize profits. Um, but they realized that it was way too good to be a direct to release. Like, let's just kill all these characters. Yeah. <laughs> so much. they wanted it to be a theatrical release, but in order to do that, they had to add 12 more minutes to the movie. I don't know where those 12 minutes are because everything kind of just flows really well in this movie. Um... Yeah, so that and then it had a theatrical release, and it, it's known as being as good, if not better, than the first one, which mm-hmm. is very rare. You don't see that very often, unless you're watching like Aliens or Terminator or uh, something else. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of any. Or the sequel was but be- Shrek Two. Shrek Two. That's a good. Yeah, that's better than the first one. Okay. Also, many books on the shelf. So when Woody's giving his, like, when he's, you know, presenting to his fellow toy mates, um, there's a bookshelf behind him, and all the books are titled Pixar shorts. (laughs) Different Pixar shorts. Just like how when Ham is scrolling through the channels, every channel is a different Pixar short for, like, a second. We paused it to, to look at all of them. Yeah, and one of them was Tin Toy. So, Tin Toy did get to be in Toy Story, just not the way that they initially planned. For like two frames. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, the scene where Woody sees all of his merchandise uh, is a genuine reaction. So, you know how what he's all mean? shocked? Yeah. And yeah. So, they showed Tom Hanks pictures of like the merchandise, and they just recorded his reaction. So that way it <laughs> really? could be genuine. Yeah, that way it could be genuine, and then they put that in the film. You only get, like, one chance at that. Yeah, I mean, they know what they're doing. So yeah, that's true. They got of course they know what they're doing. Yes. What am I talking about? It's Pixar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, 90% of their progress... Progress? Progress. Progress 
was deleted by accident. No, wasn't it like almost deleted? 90% of the progress was deleted. I thought... I read a fact about that. What the whole... It's different wherever you look, but anyway. 90% of 90% the of it was deleted when an animator put an erasing code in the wrong place. And this was a year before its release, so it wasn't completely done yet. But 90% of their progress so far was deleted. Oh. And merely because someone accidentally dragged an erasing code in the wrong place. And <laughs> um, so it would have taken 30 people F. to, like do what they had done. It would have taken 30 people just, like, a year alone to get back to where they were, and they were scheduled to release in a year. Yeah. So, but luckily... Luckily, Galen... Galen Sussman came to the rescue. Galen? She, Galen? It's G-L- G-A-L-Y-N. I think it's Galen. Would that anyway. make any sense? Okay, I don't know. Anyway. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. She's not listening to this. What am I saying? <laughs> um, but she's a technical director, and since she had just had a baby, she had been working at home. So she had a copy of it at home. Oh. So she came to the rescue. And the person who single-handedly saved yeah, <laughs> Toy Story saved 2. Yeah, saved Toy Story 2. Um, they would have had to completely do everything again. Yeah, who knows what would they would have changed. would have been a completely different version of the movie. It, yeah, I mean, they would have had to recreate everything like the assets would be different i mean i guess it would have been updated and slightly. it probably would have come out a year later yeah also so jesse i have some fun stuff about jesse tell me jesse's character was brought on by john lasseter's wife nancy because she said that there needed to be a female character of more substance than bo peep because before jesse the only female character was bo peep and that was back when she was all she did was, like, kiss Woody, you know? That's true. This is before Toy Story 4 when she becomes, like, a badass and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, so Jesse was originally written as a Mexican woman named Sen- Senorita Cactus. Yeah. Senorita Cactus? And she was going to sway Woody with her feminine wiles. That was the original idea for what Jesse eventually became. Clearly that idea was brought on by men, but... <laughs> Senorita Cactus. Yes. But then... That's your new nickname. <laughs> yeah. And then Nancy was like, no, here's Jesse. I think. And yeah, then, that's how it went. Yeah, and then they went with Jesse instead, because that made a lot more sense. But that that's what Jesse was originally going to be. She wasn't even going to be Jesse. So it's pretty crazy. Insane. Yeah. I can't imagine her being Senorita Cactus at all. That wouldn't make any sense with the plot. No. Like. Would not. Like at all. I don't know. Because I guess cowboys and cactuses, cacti. They're in the desert. Yeah. That's why. That's how they would have connected, I guess. I don't know. It wouldn't make that much sense, though. Um. It would be kind of a long shot. What's it called? Kind of a... Kind of a, a stretch, if you yeah. will. Um, <clears throat> Definitely. Yes. That's all I have on Toy Story 2. <gasps> That's it? Yeah. Um, Toy Story 2 also has... Every single movie is really good at making all everyone cry. Mm-hmm. There's a, That's what they call the Pixar moment. Right? Yes. Or the but Pixar element. But I feel like Toy Story 2, 3, and 4 manage to do it every single time I watch it. Mm-hmm. Like every other Pixar film... Maybe besides Up, like, I know when the sad part is coming, so it, like, and it doesn't make me cry because I've seen it a million times, but with Toy Story 2, 3, and 4, I cry regardless. Mm-hmm. Even though I know it's coming. I cry regardless. It's, yeah. In Toy Story 2, it's when Jessie gives her backstory, and she's left on the street, and Toy Story 3 is obviously when Andy gives his toys to... Bonnie. To Bonnie. And in Toy Story 4, it's when... Woody leaves Buzz and Jesse and all everyone else to be with Bo. That's that almost didn't happen, by the way. That almost didn't happen. They almost uh, didn't have them get together. Well, we we visited Pixar Animation yeah. Studios. We and visited there. We visited. We, we took to a Pixar we took a Studios. tour. We took a tour um, with her family. And... This is this is not like a thing people can just do. This was like at an auction, which is why we were able to do it. Like a charity auction. Yes, and. We went and they told us that they didn't know that the movie was going to 
end up with Woody leaving Buzz and Jesse to be with Bo Peep when they started making it. Like, they said that that's how it goes with a lot of films. They don't know how it's going to end when they start it. Mm-hmm. They just let it, let the story go as they create it. it take up, they said it could take upwards of, like, five, six years. Right? Yeah. Because they got to get the story just right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can't believe they spent five or six years on The Good Dinosaur and it still turned out like that. They did? <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay. I'm just I'm I feel guessing. like, the good, well, The Good Dinosaur was also Disney. It's like the first... Wait, no, that's Planes. Wait, what am I saying? I don't know. Disney Pixar. Yeah. I don't know. They never talk about The Good Dinosaur no, in Pixar. They, no. They're always like, that's the film we don't talk about because they know it's bad. The film that <laughs> shall not be named. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. My turn? Toy Story 2. Toy Story 2. Moving on <laughs> to Toy Story. Look, Barbie, a big ugly man doll. Sorry, you can go on. <laughs> Toy Story 3! Toy Story 3, everybody. We're moving on. Yes. This came out June 18th, 2010. I remember the day I went and saw it. Nice. I we don't... All, there was not a dry eye in the house. In the theater in room. In the theater room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember going. I just don't remember when. <laughs> well, it had to be around June Yeah, it had to be within a month or two of that date. Yeah. Okay. So, getting right into the fun facts here. Mm-hmm. Sid, from Toy Story 1, you probably already know this, but he's uh, in Toy Story 3 as the he garbage is. man. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, he's the garbage man in the beginning. Um, you can be seen, like, jamming out to music and repping his, like, classic skull shirt. He's still wearing the same shirt after, yeah. after 15 years. However, yeah. And they used the same voice actor, even though it was just him going, oh. bring, 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 bring. You yeah, know, he was 13 in Toy Story 1 when he voiced Sid, and he's 27, because <laughs> that's how long it was between 1 and 3, 14 years. Um, oh, you know the part where Buzz, like, they open his battery compartment, and you see the batteries? Um, and they, like, switch him from demo to, oh. or on to demo? <clears throat> yes. The, those batteries are brand named BNL, mm-hmm. which is... By and large, the mega corporation Wally. So there's just so many just callbacks oh, it's to their a other Easter Pixar films. Yeah, so many okay. Easter egg. A lot of this is going to be like Easter eggs and stuff. Um, Easter eggs. Yeah. On the corkboard at the daycare, and you can see a postcard from Carl and Ellie from Up. Wait, why? I don't know. It's just on the the corkboard. Why is it there? I don't know. They just <laughs> they never had kids. <laughs> Spoiler. Oh. She's not... She has a miscarriage. She... Oh. <laughs> Either she has a miscarriage or she's not or, able to have kids. You don't oh, really... Yeah. They, don't, they don't really say. Mm-hmm. So but why why would there know. be a postcard at a daycare center? I don't know. Maybe it's a family member Pixar. who works it. Maybe. Mm. I mean, Maybe, you don't, but I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, Lotso the bear. Yes. Got Disney sued. Why? Over, uh, like, similar brand name and product to another company. So the company's called, named DLI, Dees Lisa Industries. And they, had, they had been selling their own Lots of Hugs toy bears since 1995. And Lotso is Lotso Hugs, like Lots of... Oh. <laughs> so it's very similar. <laughs> Did they win? I don't know. Okay. They claimed that it drastically affected their ability to market their product. After Toy Story 3 was released. Well, who would want a Lotso bear after seeing Toy Story 3? He's evil. He smells like strawberries. But he's awful. Like, I mean, I've seen them at, like, Downtown Disney. I'm always like, who would buy that? Someone who hasn't seen the movie, probably. Yeah, that's like, oh, that's a cute bear from Toy Story. But, like, it's not... It's the bad piece of bear. All I see is evil. All I see is him running away from them plummeting towards their death Mm. of fire. Mm Mm-hmm. Go on. God, that fire scene. <laughs> that fi- There's a person out there who edited the film to uh, cut to the credits when they're all holding hands and going towards the fire. Before the clock comes down. And yeah, it just cuts to the, the credits. It just cuts to the credits. And it, it, and <laughs> they show their, their, they show they their showed, family. Yeah, they showed their family. They were like, we gotta watch Toy Story 3. And they showed them that edited version. Yeah. They- and they were like... <laughs> the toys just die. They just burn. That's all. That's how it ends. They get incinerated. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's crazy. That's such an evil prank to do. I know. I thought that was going to happen, though, the first time I saw it. I was like, this is the end. Like, there's literally no way out. But then a claw comes from the sky and picks him up. You know, they referenced that. Or the three aliens were like, oh, the claw. And then they get bulldozed. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. So they made it to the, the claw That's somehow. True. That's true. Uh, more fun facts? Go on. Hmm. I have a lot. Um, they had to completely recreate the models for every character since the old files didn't work with their modern software anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, they had to completely redo them. But they made them the same, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, it gave them the chance to clean up their design a teensy bit. Like, yeah. Uh, for example, in Buzz, if you look in the first movie, a lot of his pieces are kind of, like, sticking into each other. Or, like, they're clipping into each other. Mm-hmm. Um... But now they, they cleaned it up and he's a full toy that doesn't, all of his parts don't go into each other like in an animated movie or something. You know, you know what I mean? It acts like a real life yes, toy. Yes, yes. Um, I see. And they cleaned up other designs too. I don't really have any other examples. Okay. But... No, I believe you. <laughs> yeah. I see it. I see it with oh, my eyes. You mean they also, I mean, they also added like texture layers to make them look all scuffed up and played with, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is a really nice touch. Pixar's insane mm -hmm. with how good they... Like, the beginning of Toy Story... I know we're not talking about Toy Story 4 yet, but, like, the beginning shot of Toy Story 4, it's when it's raining... It's photorealistic. When it's raining, everyone thought it was, like, a trailer for another movie. And then... <laughs> and then it's like... And then it cuts to, like, Woody in the window, and you're and everyone, like, jumped out of their seat, because yeah. they were like, oh, wait, this is the movie? This is it. Because it, it looked real. It's insane. They're getting so amazing at what they do. I can't even go on about Toy Story 3. <laughs> the original voice actor of Andy from 1995, yes. named John Morris, played him again. I knew that, yeah. Yeah. That's smart. Uh, so, this is a testament to Pixar's animated abilities um, and their fur that they created and learned how to do in Monsters, Inc. Mm -hmm. Well, Lotso has 3,473,000 thousand two hundred and seventy one individual hairs organized in several layers of different length and thickness <laughs> just Lord. on him that's how they make him look likable at first because he looks so fuzzy yeah. and real like you could just hug him mm -hmm. just like you that's his whole point yeah that's why too bad he can't too bad he's, he's evil mm, he's bad yeah too bad he's bad <laughs> go on um there was such a huge gap between two and three for a few reasons um there was a huge layoff at Pixar from Disney, and um, Disney was the distributor before them, before Pixar. They would distribute Pixar's films. But then in 2004, they bought Pixar for $7.4 billion. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I sure Fair. don't have that Fair. much money. I don't. That's pocket change. Yeah. To me, actually. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm Wait a minute. <laughs> um, yeah. Lee Unkrich, or Lee Unkrich, one of the directors said they had the idea for three right after they finished two. Mm -hmm. Like, they were just chilling at uh, John Lasseter's house, and, and they're like, Yeah. We, have, we gotta do it now. Here's the idea. And they came up with the with a preliminary idea over that one weekend. Well, I feel like it's a good thing there's such a big gap, because, like, mm -hmm. Andy grew up. It wouldn't make mm -hmm. any sense if they were, like, three years apart and all of a sudden Andy's going off to college yeah. and he was, like, eight in the previous Yeah, one. I mean, but, but, like, the gap would have been shorter if there weren't, like, I corporate issues Like, it would have come out, like, a couple of years with. earlier. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of, like, mismanagement and stuff. And I'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Toy Story 3 was the first film to theatrically feature Dolby Surround 7.1, which is eight-channel audio. Um, usually they'd be filmed in, f or upscaled to 7.1. Okay. It's, it's just a different audio setup. It adds more, two more speakers and you get a better, f like. Gotcha. Yeah. A cool. sound experience. Cool. cool. For those audio nerds out there, that'll be fun to know. All of my audio geeks. Go on. Mm -hmm. Well, this film earned a total of over $1.067 billion in worldwide earnings. Wow, that's. And, and a lot. It became the compared highest. Compared to the first. Yeah, I know. Story. I know. It became the highest-grossing animated film of all time, surpassing Shrek 2, originally at nine 
119 million. Oh. It was the highest, the highest grossing animated film at the time. Okay. Um, Frozen surpassed it in 2014, oh, and it was Frozen. the first. It was the first Pixar film to earn it over a billion dollars. I see. Yeah. Frozen. Yeah. There were okay. <laughs> this one's crazy. I didn't know anything about this, but there was the original plans for Toy Story three to not be written and produced by Pixar. Why? So Michael Eisner, Disney chairman of the time, put in plans to start a new Disney studio called Circle 7 Animation, which was specifically set up with the role of creating sequels to Disney-owned Pixar properties. And <laughs> rivals and other animators of that group from like Pixar called them Pixarnt. Because they were like pissed. They're taking... Pixarnt? Yeah. <laughs> like are not? Yeah. Oh. Um... Yeah. Because they were really salty. Because like... Pixar Disney, not. Yeah, Disney owned all of the character assets, or yeah. owned all of the characters from Pixar, and they could do whatever they wanted with them. Oof. Um, and it caused a lot of drama, drama in there. So T. They, there was an original script and treatment written by Circle Seven, um, and the script was focused around Buzz Lightyear having a toy recall. And Buzz was m malfunctioning and sent back to Taiwan, where he, oh, oh, he was sent back to Taiwan. And the toys at the at home later learned there was a huge worldwide recall for Buzz Lightyear, so they shipped themselves to Taiwan to rescue him. And they added a whole bunch of new marketable characters because Disney wants to make money. Yeah, um, like, as always. Like Transformers and some new characters that had names like Rosie, Jade, and the, they also introduced a replacement for Buzz since he's getting recalled, right? Uh -huh. That person would have named but Dax Blastar. Which is actually a kind of cool name. And he had Dax an acce danger. Yeah, he had an accessory cat named Comet. Comet. Yeah. So it's really weird that... Like from Full House? I guess. But this is so weird that Disney had a different studio set up to make Pixar sequels. It sounds like Toy Story 2, but Buzz it's, is the main character. It's very similar. They, they assigned Bradley Raymond, who previously directed tons of Disney's direct-to-video sequels, such as The Hunchback of Notre Dame 2, The Lion King 1 and a half. Like, they hired him to direct the film. And I guess this was going to be, like, plans to do more Pixar sequels direct-to-video kind of thing, you know? He directed Lion King 1 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> wow, the masterpiece Lion King 1 and a half. I mean, uh, yeah. I've seen that way too many times. <laughs> and it gets worse with every watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of this uh, changed in 2006 when Disney bought Pixar. And... The, and basically transferred control to Pixar. They were in charge of animation and everything from Disney. So they had all of their... They had the rights to their property back. And they don't have to worry about Disney making whatever the F that was going to be. I see. Um, it really does sound like Toy Story 2, but just Buzz. Like, because in Toy Story 2, Woody's arm, mm -hmm. you know, gets ripped off. And then he's taken at a garage sale and he meets <clears throat> all of his other... People in this one, it's like, oh, Buzz is mal malfunctioning. Yeah. And then he gets sent back to Taiwan, where all of the other, like, probably toys from his company are as well. Mm hmm It sounds like they yeah. just kind of flipped it. He'd meet other Buzzes. And then and they other... all come to rescue him. <laughs> He'd meet a bunch of other uh, recalled toys as well from around the world. And, like, yeah. Meet, and, like, talk to exactly, them. So. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then they'd probably bring them home and surprise Andy with more toys. You know? Yeah. There were... Uh, there Ooh, was some concept. There was some concept art mm -hmm. already, and it was crazy that a script was written, but th there were no remnants of that original script. I feel used. bad for whoever wrote the script. Yeah, sorry. No remnants of that script was used since Pix the Pixar filmmakers didn't even read it. <laughs> they didn't want to have it They're influence like, no. them at all. <laughs> um, they came up with it over a weekend, but it got a full story treatment I after. I mean, I feel like like they've they've done everything with toys that they possibly could because they. First, they 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 go to a daycare, and then the fourth one they go to a uh, antique shop. <laughs> antique shop, but they they also Bo and Woody meet at a playground. Yeah. So they have like a playground, an antique shop, a carnival, daycare, a carnival, 
and they don't have an amusement park ever but in the second fine. one they have you know him they have a toy store <laughs> yeah they have a road trip yes so in toy st- yeah so they've done they've done a so, lot of so much adventuring yeah like as much as i feel like it could like it would make sense for a toy to be a part of mm-hmm. if that makes any sense yeah that makes sense yeah um toy story 4 was originally going to be like a a uh, love story between Woody and Bo, but then it quickly turned into an adventure film, like what we saw. I have mm-hmm. no idea how that script would have turned out, but that's what I read. Well, I mean, that's kind of what it is. It, just it, has it is, ultimately. It. Yeah. Yeah. God, I'm just thinking about how um, when he, in the beginning, where he puts his hands on the box mm-hmm. of Bo. And he's well, about to leave. He's about to leave. He's about to leave Andy, and then Andy runs out being like, where's Woody? Mm-hmm. I lost him. And he's like, I can't, I can't go with you. I have to be here for Andy. Mm-hmm. But he puts his hands there. Yeah. And when, at the end of the film, yeah. he puts his hands on the carnival. Yeah. Like, thing. Whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he, it's the same thing. It, yes. It's a I callback. Know. I know. It's a, I know I'm making it such a big spectacle, but it's so cool. No, I know. It's 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 good. It, rem- it it's a way of telling the viewer. Remember when this happened before? It's happening again, but this time it's going to be different. Cause he actually I'm a is sucker go for him. that kind of stuff. Yeah, Toy Story Four also just. I guess we're moving into Toy Story Four now. Yeah, we'll be moving into Toy Story Four. Okay, Toy Story Four also like, just kind of, made me sad how, Woody is all of a sudden he's not. He's not the favorite toy, mm-hmm. and he's just always being left in the closet, which makes sense because Bonnie wants Jesse mm-hmm. to be the sheriff. Mm-hmm. Um, she takes her his sheriff. Uh, he picks him up and then takes it off and drops him, yeah. and then puts it on Jesse, um, which makes sense. You know, when you're a little girl, you mostly want to play. You mostly want you know strong females t- toys to play with. If that makes mm-hmm. any sense. I mean, yeah, I mean... Um, but that part always made me sad. How he's just left in the closet, and he's like, oh. And then all of the other tiny toys are in there are like, oh, are you okay? You haven't been played with in a while. In three days, but who's counting? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah. Can uh, I move into the Toy Story fun facts of Toy Story 4? I just had, like... It's weird when I watch when I when I think of Toy Story four. I don't think of Forky at all. No, no. I don't. I think mean, of I kind of associate. I now. think of Bo. I did before. I think of Bo. I I always forget <clears throat> about Forky because he's only important. Well, I guess he's like important throughout the whole film because the whole entire point is that they're trying to save him, so that they can bring him back to Bonnie, because it's Woody's last thing that he can do to like help Bonnie. Mm-hmm. Um. So I understand he's like important in that sense. But he's only really introduced for, like, the first 20 minutes of the film. And then he's barely in it ever again. So I always just forget that he's a part of it. Because I always just think of Toy Story 4 as Bo and Woody. Falling in love and meeting again. and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All that stuff. I mean, that's what it ultimately is, but... Forky's pretty big. I mean, I Come know. On. I know, I know he's big. I just forget. <laughs> I just forget about him. Whenever, I don't, when I think of Toy Story 4, I don't think of Forky. Mm-hmm. I won't let you throw yourself away. That's not... That's Randy Newman. That's I know. not Forky. I, I know. I'm talking about Forky. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding, because R- that is Randy Newman, fact. don't throw yourself away, please. No, well, I don't know. The ongoing joke of him being like, I'm trash, it goes on for a little bit too long. <laughs> um, to each their own. Well, for me, it does. Mm-hmm. Especially with, like, the ongoing meme of people being like, hey, look, it's me, and they point at, like, a trash can. I'm always like, shut up. Yep. <laughs> it's not funny anymore. It's old. I mean, I don't know if that's what they were trying to do with it. They were like, you know what's in right now? Trash. Calling yourself trash. <laughs> that's, Se- a, that's popular right Self-deprecating now. humor. Yeah. But the thing is, Forky actually loves trash. Because he finds yeah. it cozy and warm. And then he understands that's why mm-hmm. Bonnie loves him so much. Mm-hmm. That part was also funny to me because when Forky's like, so does she think I'm warm? Like trash? It made me think about when they're all plummeting towards the fire in Toy Story 3. Oh, I, that, In trash. Yeah, I was 
That made me remember one more fun fact about Dungeon Toy Story 3. Okay, go That on. all of the, that trash sequence, like, mm-hmm. that was the hardest thing for them to animate. Because there's so many tiny little specks. Yeah. Can, millions. Oh, I noticed that. There's so it's, many. It, it, re- it took so long to render. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long it did, but it took for Years. So Toy Story 4. <clears throat> Toy Story 4 came out June 21st, 2019. It's a little under two years ago. Yeah. Just about. I can't believe a Toy Story movie came out that recently. I know. It doesn't feel like no, it. Two, two, no. Two years ago. So, it was the eighth highest grossing film of 2019. Okay. It was the highest grossing Toy Story movie in the series. At Makes one po- sense. At $1.073 billion worldwide. Yeah. It won the Academy Award of Best Animated Feature. As it should. And the fourth one was not actually planned until, like, much later. Because they didn't want to, like, tack on a fourth one. Yeah. Uh, just well, because. That's what's good about Pixar is that they don't force sequels. Mm-hmm. They only do them if an idea comes to them and it actually is good. Yeah, they produced it for the pure passion of the series. Quality over quantity. Definitely. Um, you want to talk about like how photorealistic this film is? Yes. So we already kind of touched on it, but it looks incredibly photoreal. Like, for example, the amount of processing power that they had to use was incredible. Um, one tree alone, one single tree asset, like, it would have six billion leaves on it. Jesus. <laughs> um, in one scene, there were almost three trillion pine needles. Three trillion. That's, in, that's impossible to imagine. <laughs> it's so, so cool. Uh, <laughs> so, in the carnival sequence, they had a very strong attention to detail to make things feel incredibly real meeting fantasy and gritty real life and the, it blends together perfectly and beautifully three yes. percent of the lights in the carnival are broken and don't work because that's how it kind of is in real life when yeah, you go to the fair that's true that's cool yeah <laughs> the attention to detail is crazy the lighting looks real <laughs> you can take a screenshot of it and it could almost pass mm-hmm. as like a real photo. <laughs> no, it uh, could. It could pass as a real photo. As long as there are no like animated humans in it, like mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, fun fact about Gabby Gabby. Oh, fun! My favorite character of Toy Story Four. I didn't hate her as much this time. Yeah, I know. I really didn't like her the first time I saw it. And that, then I realized. Oh, she's just really depressed. Like, they took a Lotso kind of thing. Yeah. But she was... But she wasn't abandoned. But you Uh, can also tell right away that she's evil. Yeah. Like, even though she's not actually evil, like, they make her seem very evil because she's surrounded by all these creepy dolls that she Mm -hmm. orders around. Exactly. Yes. Um, she was originally going to be blonde. But it is much harder to... Okay. Well, it's much harder to animate blonde hair than it is red hair. Yeah. It would have taken... Five but times as much processing. Fun fact. Five times the amount of rendering due to how blonde hair interacts with light. Oh. So that's just it's just harder to do blonde blonde hair when you're animating a video or animating a film. Bo was blonde, so I mean but Bo is Bo. But Bo is Bo. Bo Bo Bo. Bo 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 Bo. Well also her hair is like up in the same position the entire yeah. movie and it's Covered by a bow. Mm-hmm. A pink bow. Mm-hmm. Okay, go on. Um, the cobwebs in the store, in the antique shop, are AI generated. They had their own, like, spiders, AI spider software <laughs> make <laughs> the cobwebs. So they're not just, like, assets that they dragged from That's a library. so weird. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that fact. Um <sighs> There were over a hundred different versions of Forky designed and developed. Right, we we saw saw them. Yeah. At the Pixar Animation Studios, we saw like a bunch of ideas for Forky. Mm -hmm. They they just had, they called it the Spork Shop, where they had people come in. Everyone designed their own Forky. Everyone designed their own Fork. That's so fun. Yeah. They, They wanted it to be materials that you could find in the trash. Perfect. What did you do at work today? I made a fork. I made a spork. I made I, de- I decorated a spork with clay and <laughs> popsicle sticks and uh, <laughs> pipe cleaners. Yeah, the antique shop took two years 
pretty much two years to create just the, the place alone. Mm -hmm. And there are so many Easter eggs in there. If you look at any shelf, you can probably see something like calling back to another Pixar film or another Pixar something mm -hmm. or Disney film, you know. Um, it's so full of so much stuff and it's really one of the coolest set pieces that is in a Pixar film in my opinion. Um, you know the voice of Dr. not the voice of Mr. not Dr. Mr. Potato had passed away yeah. in 2017. His yeah. name is Don Rickles. Um, and this was before he recorded any lines for Toy Story 4. His family reached out and was like, Pixar, is there any way that we can still have him in the film? Yeah. I don't know if they would have not had him in the film. Or just not um, had him talk. Yeah, just not had him had talk. So, so they went through like 25 years of archives from unused voice lines in the previous movies and other ones from video, from video games. Because there's like a bunch of yeah. Toy Story video games. Yeah. Um, so they, I guess all of the lines that they used in the film mm -hmm. are ones that were unused. And oh, so he got to be in it. He got to be in it. And it's completely him. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I remember looking up Don Rickles while researching and I was like, wait, he died in 2017? <clears throat> but he yeah. talks in Toy Story 4. That makes sense. Um, that also reminds me of like Tom Hanks in a lot of the... Um, like, video games for Toy Story and the dolls, uh, his brother actually voices them. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the toys. Like, you'd find it yeah, Target or something. Yeah, he, because he, he's able to do a Tom Hanks voice. So, since Tom Hanks is a very busy man being in hundreds of films, his brother just, like, does uh, Woody work for him. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, go on. Duke Kaboom is Canadian, obviously, but so is oh. Keanu Reeves. Oh, really? Yeah, so they wanted to get a real Canadian to voice him. And he's Canadian. Keanu. I love Keanu. John Wick. <laughs> John Wick. <laughs> um, one of the coolest facts by far is that Pixar used virtual cinema camera lenses um, in the production of this film. Mm-hmm. So the director of photography modeled virtual lenses for the film, and they're highly sophisticated and operate pretty much in the same way as they would in real life. Mm -hmm. And um, this film, Toy Story 4, is the first film to use anamorphic lenses. Yes. Um, they capture a wider field of view than the native dimensions of a camera sensor, and it creates a unique and cinematic look. And it also creates oval bokeh? I think bokeh? Bokeh? Um... They're the little circles of light that are out of focus. Like, if you see a light source and it, it's in the background, mm -hmm. it there's like a little circle of light around it. Or it depends on how the lens is, but mm -hmm. it creates an oval shape. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's like, think of it when you look at a light and you're squinting, too. Like, that kind of thing. Okay. That's crazy. It's the first animated film to use anamorphic lenses. Yeah. Like, they used... That's insane. They they use techniques in real life as they would in the film. Yeah. And the DP said there was literally like no difference between how it would operate in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, and it it adds for like a shallower depth of field, which mm -hmm. is great for portraying small things like toys in a large world. Because if you look at them in this film, the sh that shallow depth of field is very noticeable. Yeah. Um. And I really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, That's true. It's also the first animated film to use a split diopter shot, which is a special lens that allows the foreground and background elements to be in focus at the same time. So, like, oh. one half of the screen will be in focus, and it's like, let's say it's the background, and there's a character behind right, the right, camera right, character right. in yes. the foreground on yes. the left. They're both in focus. And it's... Um, it, it's very unnatural to see because that's not how we visually perceive the world. Yeah. And this off-putting and disorienting feeling that we get is used as foreshadow in movies. And it, it, example here, it was used in a scene with Gabby Gabby and, and Forky mm -hmm. when Gabby Gabby was holding him pretty much captive in her display case with all of the china and the other like antique stuff behind the glass um 
it's it, it's suggesting something isn't quite right. And you know, she's kind of she's lying to Forky, making sure that he's all right yeah. and everything. Um, and yeah, of course. I mean, we know that Gabby Gabby's evil. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it it, it grow it, to understand. Yeah. Why she's like that. Though. Yeah, exactly. And that's about it. Uh, those camera lenses did a really great job of marrying real world and fantasy and fantasy beautifully. So that is all Very I got cool. for nice. Toy Story Four. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. The, Shout out to Casey. Casey uh, gave a presentation about the director of photography of Toy Story 4 and about the whole anamorphic lenses thing mm-hmm. and told us all about it. So thank you, Casey, for those fun facts. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah. we, we love Toy Story. I love Toy Story so much. I love it so much. I'm glad they rethemed. When you think of Pixar, you think of Toy Story. I'm glad they rethemed Paradise Pier, or what was it called before? It was Paradise Pier. Paradise Pier to Pixar Pier. I rem- I didn't like that at first, but now I, I, I like it. I I yeah, I don't care about. We Paradise have our lamplight lounge coaster right here. <laughs> we should talk about more Pixar films mm-hmm. at some point. Like Monsters Inc. and Finding Nemo and In the Incredibles. And the Incredibles. All the classic Pixar films. Should we do an episode about the bad Pixar films? I'm kidding. <laughs> like the good good dinosaur. I don't dinosaur. wanna have to sit through Brave again. I I can't do it. I don't want if you like Brave. I don't wanna look at the good dinosaur again. I don't wanna watch the good dinosaur. I don't wanna watch Brave. I don't really wanna watch Bugs Life. <laughs> Incredibles too. Bugs Life is like okay. Mm. Um Anyway, <laughs> I think that just about sums it up for us here today. Yeah. yeah. We appreciate you listening, watching, and supporting us every episode. Yes, thank you. So thank you so much. Um, we'll talk to you guys in two weeks. In two weeks. When we discuss something else. More movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Talk to you later. Catch you next time. Peace. Peace, Bo Beast.